Okay, Dino Madonaino, Heno Alena Masia, Dan, a corn, and now Alena Masia, Dan, a corn, and now let's begin this show tonight in Share Ora. I'd like to dedicate this show tonight in the memory of my father in law whose yard site is tonight. Lilu Nishmat, Eliezer Ben Yishayahu David, Ruch Adonai Tenechene Megan Eden. The Gam Nefesh Harav Aaron Volkin Zichon Satit Racha, Ruch Adonai Tenechene Megan Eden. The Gam Nefesh Harav Hagon Adin Ebeni Israel Steins as Ruch Adonai Tenechene Megan Eden. And also to Lilu Nishmat, Harav Yaakot Svi Ben Liva. Ruch Adonai Tenechene Megan Eden. להבדיל בין המתים לחיים רפואה שלמה for הרב שמעיהו יוסף חיים בן פשע מרים אל נא רפאנה לו, אל נא רפאנה לו, אל נא רפאנה לו also for אליהו בן שרה for שבעון משה בן עדינה for יהושע בן משה for חיים שנו זלמן יהודה בן הינדה יוכבד for דף זב בן ליה and for משה בן בבי אל נא רפאנה להם, אל נא רפאנה להם, אל נא רפאנה להם also for מרסו בת פורטונה עשר פרו בת חנה דבורה for חבר מיים בת בוניה רזה for Chaya Miriam bat Esther, for Miriam Inessa bat Leah, El Narafan Alehen, El Narafan Alehen, El Narafan Alehen. Also, for all the people affected by the coronavirus, may they have a rapid recovery. El Narafan Alehen, El Narafan Alehen, El Narafan Alehen. Okay, um, so just a brief word about my uh, father in law whose yard site is tonight. Um, Baruch Hashem, my father in law was a wonderful man, he was a great man, <coughs> and uh, he was an Adin Nefesh, a sweet man. And uh, basically, uh, he treated me like a son for the entire time that uh, I, li- I knew him. And uh, his loss is tremendously felt by the family. And I hope in the Zuchut of the Torah we're going to learn tonight that his neshama should have aliyah. Uh, and uh, and uh, he, should, uh, know only, he should only be melitz yosher for all of us in Olam Hazeh. So we're on page um, Kof Yud Gimel. And uh, and uh, basically, uh, we're going to start on the top of the page. The rabbis established <coughs> that in the morning, or actually in the morning and in the uh, in the evening, we read Kriyat Shema and afterwards we pray. So he is referring, of course, to Tefillah of Shacharit. That the tefillah of Yad, which is of course the tefillin of the Yad in the Kriyat Shema, opens up the Share tefillah, opens up the gates of prayer. And that's the reason why Kriyat Shema comes before the tefillah. And on Shabbat and Yom Tov, and Sarich Tefillin, there's no need for the tefillin. Because on Shabbat and Yom Tov, there are other ideas, there are other items that are different and also as great on those days. The Sharim Kulam, next page, Petuchim, and all the gates are open. Basically what he means is that on the days of Chol, you need the Tefillin Shel Yad, especially Shachrit, to open up the tefill, open up the gates of Shamayim for the Tefillah. Whereas on Shabbat and Yom Tov, there are the days themselves, there's an uh, idea of the days themselves, as he said last week, they're ot, they're a sign, and those days themselves are what allows there to be an opening of the Shamayim for the prayers. So therefore, on those days, we do not wear tefillin. Mashal l'malha davar domeh, this is a mashal of like what? What is in a parable? Keshiyesh ha-melech en tzarich l'chotamo. When you have the king, you don't need his signet ring. And so therefore the Shabbat and Yom Tov are, are, are different. Why? Because they themselves are an Ot. But when there's no Shabbat and there's no Yom Tov, it's Yom Chol, then you need the Tefillin as an Ot. And therefore on those days, Shabbat and Yom Tov, you don't need the Tefillin at all because you have the Ot of the Shabbat itself. And of course every man has the Ot of the Brit Milah all the time. Okay, let's go back one page. Kof Nun Dalid. Kriyat Shema ve'achakach litpalel. We see the concept of saying Kriyat Shema and then praying after Kriyat Shema. Kedita b'Gemara, like it's explained in the Gemara, Masechet Berachot, Daf Yudal Adamut Bet. Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, Harotzei sheyekabel alav ol machut shamayim shlema. A person who wants to accept upon himself the yoke of heaven in its entirety, or in its perfection, or in its completion. Yifane ve'itol yadav. He should go to the bathroom, and he should then make netilat yadaim. 
V'yanech tefillin, and he should put on the tefillin, ve'ikra kriyat shema ve'itpalel. And he should read kriyat shema, and he should pray. V'zohi o machut shamayim shlema. And this is the concept of o machut shamayim, accept the yoke of heaven upon yourself, shlema, in perfection. Which means you need all of these things. Yifaneh, v'yito yadav, bathroom, netilat yadayim, tefillin, kriyat shema, and tefillah. V'yakavana shebetikunim elu adam me'orer hanagat svirat amalchut. And the Kavanah, the rabbi, is going to explain here that with these tikkunim, with these various things, which is the bathroom and the washing of the hands and the tefillin and kriyat and the tefillah, the prayer, this is how a person opens up the government and wakes up the sefirah of the malchut. Keshemit panev yadav because when a person goes to the bathroom and takes care of his bodily needs, especially talking about number two, but even number one, when a person does that, what does he do? He's removing and taking care out the tumah, and he washes his hands, so the first thing, of course, is sur mera. A person has to remove himself from the ra. In this situation, a person has to remove himself from the tum'ah. So the bathroom is where a person removes the filth and the tum'ah from his physical body. And then through the netila yadayim, he remo- removes the tum'ah that's on his hands, which is a spiritual tum'ah that leaves his body. And that's why one of the worst types of idol worship that is, that's mentioned in the Torah is basically uh, Baal Peor which is a concept of defecating in front of the idol, and that's how it was worshipped. This concept of through the Tum'ah, which is the, the, the meaning there, through the Tum'ah they tried to get special things to happen and tried to access uh, certain items through the other side. This, of course, is the, the, one of the worst Abu Dazara that is imaginable. Continuing on, So now that a person has removed the Tumah, both the physical Tumah of the bathroom and the spiritual Tumah of the Netila Yadayim, now he puts on the Tfilin Shal Yad, he puts on the Yad, the hand Tfilin, and Kosher et HaMalchut, and he ties the Malchut to accept the Shefa Elyon. He connects the Malchut with what's above, this is the concept of Ukshartam, and this way he can receive Shefa from above. Ubi Kriyat Shema Mekabel Ol Malchut Yitbarach, and when a person says Kriyat Shema, he accepts upon himself O Machut Shemaim. This is the concept of Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokei Hashem Echad. Kumo Shibir Besefer Derech Hashem, like it was explained in the book Derech Hashem in Chelak Dal of Perak Yirvi. Ve'al Yedei Shem Kabel O Machut Shemaim. By the way, a person accepting O Machut Shemaim through the Kriyat Shema Meorer Shiofia Haborei Yitbarach BeMalchuto. He he wakens up that that the Borei that the Creator Yitbarach Shemo in his kingship will appear and will rule over his world through the accepting of the yoke of heaven. This allows Hashem to rule. Now, of course, Hashem is the Melech no matter what we do, but we, like we discussed last week, this concept of the image of Hashem in the world, this is given to the Tachtonim, specifically the Jewish people. We are the ones who, who allow the image of God in the world. This is Avraham Avinu. The whole concept of that he left Hashem when they came to visit him, when Hashem came to visit him, during the uh, when he was on the third day of the Brit Milah, and he leaves to go to visit with to, to go to Hachnasat Orchim, and the Gemara learns out Gedola Hachnasat Orchim Gedola Hachnasat Orchim Mikabala Pene Shechina. Greater is bringing guests into the house than is Kabbalat Pnei Shekhinah, receiving the face of the Shekhinah. And why is that? Because refi- receiving the face of the Shekhinah is basically the Shekhinah is already there. It's not increasing the Shekhinah in the world at all. It's recognizing that the Shekhinah is there. But when Avraham Avinu goes out and he brings the guests in the house, and through this process he brings them onto the fold, Tachat Kanfei Shekhinah, he brings them under the fold. What he's doing is now he's increasing the image of Hashem in the world. And that is the true mission. The true mission is not just to appreciate the Shekhinah that's here, but the true mission is to increase the Shekhinah that is here. And that's what Avraham Avinu taught us in Parashat Vayera, which we read this past Shabbat. So continuing on, through the acceptance of the yoke of heaven, this is how the Jew declares that God is the Melech. And this is how we increase the Shekhinah in the world. And through this, the person is able to draw the Tov from the upper Sfirot. The great goodness and the peace and tranquility 
to the created beings. And then the emanation increases. And then it's increased. The emanation and the holiness and the purity is increased. And the strength, the, the powers of the evil are basically underneath, are folded over, and they're enslaved to the Kedusha. And they do not are not given the power to cause kilkul, to cause destruction, to cause things to be messed up of the goodness in the world. And this is what the uh, the the nefesh uh, the um, the Derech uh, Hashem said, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato. Continuing on, the tikunim, and after all these tikunim. Yamod betfila kedita bezoar. A person should stand up. The concept of amida in the tefila, which of course we talk when it mentions tefila. Here we're specifically talking about the Shemona Esrei Tefila, as it says in the Zohar, in Parashat Breishit Daf Kaf Gimel Amud Aleph. Tzarich Barnash lemehave ihu keani. The Barnash, the person, has to appear as if he is ani. He is poor. Letara demalka. At the gate of the of the of the king, bitslota de amida through the prayer. This the rabbi already talked about in Amunai Svatai Tiftach of Yagiti Latecha. That's the concept of the Shechina, which is Dalav Aniya. A person through the Shechina, through the Malchut, this is how he can receive Shefa from above. And how does he do it? By himself understanding that he is Dalan Aniya, that he is empty and he is poor. This is how a person appears before Hashem in the Tefila. And a person should be with the tefillin like an evyon. Evyon is a, a, a person who is a, a evyon, a misken, we would say in Hebrew. Legabe taradiyu Adonai, vis-a-vis the gate of Adonai, which is the gate of the Malchut, which we've been discussing for the past uh, months. Veda ihu Adonai sefatai tiftach. And this is the meaning when it says, Amonai sefatai tiftach. That's the reason why that is the pasuk we say in the beginning of the tefillah. The kavana kedei shatfila tikanes der svirat malchut and the reason for this is so that the tefillah will enter through the gate, the sefirah of the malchut, shehi hashar, that this is the gate, lechol ha-tefillot she'alu lamala, for all the prayers that go up to the shamayim. V'tzarich la'asot ma'asem mitzvah she'aru inyan zeh. And a person has to do ma'asem mitzvot, the person has to do an action of mitzvah to awaken this. And of course the action of mitzvah the person is doing is putting on the tefillin and saying the kriyat shema. Both of them mitzvat aseh, positive commandments. And this is by way of the mitzvah of the tefillin. That he ties the sphere of the malchut to the sphirot that are above it. And through the kriyat shema, the person accepts upon himself the yoke of heaven. And he feels like an ani, like a poor person before the king. And that's why David HaMelech said in the Tehillim, Tefillah le'ani ki ya'atof. A tefillah for Ani, a poor person, when he is wrapped, meaning the talit. This is the concept of the tefillah. And then afterwards, in the tefillah of the Amidah, Poteach ba'amunai sefatai tiftach. He begins the pasuk, Amunai sefatai tiftach. Liftoch hashar shel sefirat ha'malchut. To open up the gate of the sefirat of the malchut. So we see that the pasuk, Amunai sefatai tiftach, is like the key that opens up the gate of the malchut. Kof nun hei. Inyanim acherim gedolim yesh be'otam hayamim. Other great items that are on those specific days. Here it's specifically talking about Shabbat and Yom Tov. The Er HaRamchal, the Ramchal explained, Mederach Hashem Chelek Dalet Perak Shishi, in the fourth parak, uh, the fourth part, in the sixth parak, Madu Alot Tzrichim Tefillin B'Shabbat. Why is it that we don't need Tefillin, tefillin on Shabbat? V'zel HaShano, and this is his language. V'tziva HaBorei Yitbarach, and the Creator, may he be blessed, commanded, Shimashech HaOr Hazeh Al HaMoach, Techila. That a person should draw this light on his brain, on his head first. By way of the tefillin of the head, the tefillin of the rosh. And through that he corrects or he repairs the moach and the neshama that is inside the moach, inside the brain. And then after it goes on the lev, that's why the straps of the tefillin shall rosh come down to the lev, and also by way of the tefillin shel yad, which is vis-a-vis the lev, vis-a-vis the heart, vitukan gam hubo, and through that he is also has a tikkun, he also has a correction, a rectification. 
and through this, a person with all of his aspects, he's included underneath this drawing of the Kedusha and his mit aterba, and he crowns with this. This is the concept of the tefillin, which is called an atara, which is called the crown. Umit kadesh kedusha raba. And he caused a tremendous amount of Kedusha in the world. And we were commanded that we have to put this atara, this crown, which is the tefillin shel rosh, on our, on our, on our heads uh, all the days, which means all the days of Chol, with the exception of the days of Kodesh, Shem Atzmam Ot Israel, because those days, specifically Shabbat and Yom Tov, are Ot already for the Jewish people. And basically, the holidays themselves are acting as an atara, as acting, acting as a crown, without any help from anything else. Because on Chol, there isn't the day itself doesn't have that level of atara, therefore a person has to put in tefillin jalyan and tefillin shal rosh. But on Shabbat and Yom Tov, since the days themselves have this aspect of the atara, aspect of the crown, therefore they don't need to have the tefillin on there, they only have the Shabbat and Yom Tov. And perhaps this is the remnant so what the Rambam says, that latid lavo, tzadikim yoshvim, the tzadikim are at rest, ve'itrotem berashahem, and their crowns are on their head. What crowns? So since Olam Haba in the future is called Yom Shikulo Shabbat. Therefore, the Shabbat itself, this concept of the rest, which is mentioned, Yoshvim, which is the concept of the Minucha, this type of spiritual rest, this is specifically the Atara that's on the crown of the person. But this is not the case with the other days of the week. Because a person cannot arrive at the crowns from the day of Chol without the efforts regarding the Tefillin. The Kavanato and his Kavana here, Sheor HaNeshama Hu Or Shel Kedusha. Here he says here that the Or of the Neshama, the light of the Neshama, is an Or of Kedusha, is a, is a light of holiness. HaMakif Adam, that is Makif, which is surrounding the Adam, surrounding the person, the same way a crown is Makif, the concept of a crown which is around the person's head. Vihu Atara Veketel Rosho. And this is the Atara, so the Neshama is like an Atara or a keter, a crown, for his head. Besod ba'atara she'itara lo imo. In the sod of the word, the pasuk in Shir Hashirim, ba'atara, in the crown that his mother put on his head. She'itara lo imo v'yom t'chonatuchaturato v'yom simhat libo. Mi ha'arat bina from the bina, which is the M. The mother is causes the bina. So here we see that the atara that is over here is the, the neshama of the person is the atara that is makif adam, and this is the atara that's around his head. Continuing on, ayen nefesh hachayim shar aleph perak tet vav and tet zayin barucha. And look at the nefesh hachayim in shar aleph in chapter 15 and chapter 16. Utfilinu mila v'shabbat nikraim ot. And we see that the tefillin and mila and shabbat are all called ot, they're all called a sign. Sheyesh bahem hashbash shel kedusha el yona. Why are they called sign? They're called sign because each one of them has a hashba'a, has an influence of the kedusha of el yona, which means it has a transmitter of the holiness or of the uh, the influence, the holy influence from the Elyon, from the upper worlds, Shemekablim Yisrael Meor HaNeshama, that the Jewish people receive from the light of the Neshama, of course the person's Neshama, Umikoach Zeh Hem Hatumim Mechotamo Shel Melech, and through this Koach, through this power, they are signed with the Chotamo Shel Melech, with the signature of the king, and that's why the the Gemara, taught, or I think it's the Zohar, that talks about the fact that a person who doesn't properly treat the Brit Milah by putting in a place that is not worthy, like in a Goya, he is Mishaker Bechotamo Shel HaMelech. He is lying with the Chotemet, with the signature of the king. That is the, that's when a person is involved in uh, sexual impropriety, especially with Goyot and things like that. Uh, we understand the same thing would be a person who's Mehalel Shabbat. It's the same idea. He's interfering with the Hotemet, which is the Shabbat is also a Hotemet. And we would also say the same thing about the Tefillin. And that's why the Gemara and Masechet, uh, I think it's Rosh Hashanah, basically says that what is considered to be a Poshea Yisrael Begufo, what is considered to be a criminal of the Jewish people with their bodies, this is a person who does not Delam Manat Kakafta, Delam Manat Tefillin. 
karkafta, which means a skull. A karkafta is also, that is the body party that is corresponding to the keter. The lamalat tefillin, that doesn't have tefillin, because he's missing the chotemet of the melech. The chotemet of the melech, of course, is the tefillin. The tefillin shel yad also is the chotemet of the melech, but that is hidden. The tefillin shel rosh, of course, is not hidden, and that's the chotemet of the melech. That's the signature ring of the king. Bemila nichneset betinok or haneshama. And basically, through the milah, he comes in, and when he's a tinok, or a neshama, when a, person, when a baby is circumcised, this is where the or of the neshama comes in, and that's why a Jewish boy is not given a Jewish name up until the brit milah. A Jewish girl, of course, is given a name as soon as the first Shabbat, or the first time the father is going in front of Sefer Torah. But a boy is not given a name until the brit milah. Why? Because the brit milah is necessary. When the brit milah happens, then that's when the or of the neshama comes into the person, and then we can give it the appropriate name, the baby. Beshabbat mekabel adam neshama yetera. And on Shabbat, we understand that the, a person who's Shomer Shabbat receives neshama yetera, an extra aspect of the neshama of the soul. Ubitfilin mekabel adalad mochin. Min ha-moach shisham mishkan ha-neshama. And the tefillin, he receives the dalad mochin, which we discussed in last week's class, the dalad mochin of the moach shisham mishkan ha-neshama, that there is the dwelling place of the neshama. Kedita be Zohar, like it's written in the Zohar, like it appears in the Zohar, and Raya Mehemna Hela Gimel Dav Kaftet Amud Alev. The Ra'u Kol Ame Harat Kishem Hashem Nikra Lecha the Yaraumi Mecca, this Pasuk over here, Ot Tfilin, the Ot Shabbat, the Ot Diomin Tavin, the sign, the Ot of the Tfilin, and the sign of the Shabbat, and the sign of the Yom Tov, of course, they're both Ot. The Ot Brit Kulehu Shekilin, and the Ot Brit are all equal, they're all included, they're all uh, shakul, they're all equal to each other, which means all three of these have the same level ot. V'lachem b'shabbat shu me'enyan olam haba, that's what I said just before, because a Shabbat is me'en olam haba, it's a tamsit, it's like a, a, an abridged version of the olam haba, that is the Shabbat, and that's why a person called her me'aneget ha-shabbat, notnim lo nehala bli mitzarim, any person who enjoys the Shabbat, as onik Shabbat, he is given a portion that has no borders, because Olam Abba is Olam Shikolo Aruch. It has no borders. And therefore, that's why Ol Shabbat is a small microcosm of what the Olam Abba is like. Shemeir Bo Or Habina. And in the Olam Abba, there's Ora the Bina, just like on the Shabbat is Meir the Bina. And the person receives this neshama yetera without any work and without any effort. And therefore he doesn't need the tikkun of the tefillin to accept that, to receive the atara, which is the or of the neshama that is shora alav. So we see that during the ways, days of Chol, with the brit milah that the man has and the tefillin, this is how he is receiving the atara, which is the or of the neshama that is on him. On Shabbat, since the Shabbat itself and Yom Tov itself brings that or, the tefillin are not needed. That's the sod behind this concept of the three ot that are mentioned here. Next page, Kof Yud Dalid, and we're going to do, do Kof Nun Vav. Keshiyesh HaMelech En Tzarich Lo When the king is there, we do not need his signature. Chotem HaMelech Hushem Shaddai so we understand the Chotem of the Melech, which means the signature of the Melech, is the name Shaddai, Shin Dalad Yud. Ushlosh Chotomot Yesh Be'adam. And that's why in the Tefillin, you have the Shin on the Shel Rosh, you have the Dalad in the back, and then you have the Yod in the Nak, in the Nat, which of course is the name Shaddai. Ushlosh Chotomot Yesh Be'adam. And there are three different Chotamot, three different, shall we say, a signature, signature rings, signet rings that has on a, on a person. The Brit Nishlam Shem Shaddai, with the Brit Milah, the name of Shaddai is Shlemut. We're going to learn, hopefully, when we get to it, the Sha'ar Sheni, the second Sha'ar, one of the names that's associated with the Yesod is the name El Shaddai, the name Shaddai. And of course, the Brit Milah is connected to the Yesod, Tzadik Yesod Olam. Hachatum begufo, that is, on his body, which means through the Brit Milah, the, the Brit Milah itself is the Chotemet of Hashem, like we said, on his body, on his physical body. Because what happens when a boar for a Brit Milah happens, the 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 uh, the uh, member itself is considered to be the Yesod, but the Atara, 
which is the head, is basically covered by the foreskin. Through the Brit Milah, what do you do? You remove the foreskin, which is what we discussed previously, this concept of removing the Tumah. You remove the foreskin, and through that you expose the Atara. The Atara is the Yod. The Atara is the Malchut. This is the entire job of a Jew in the world, is to expose the Shekhinah in the world. El ever habrit and this is the concept of the Shaddai, the Shin Dalad Yud, and exposing the Yod of the Shin Dalad. So the Shin Dalad is is like the uh, is like the shaft itself, and then the Yod is exposed during the during the uh, during the Brit Milah. Bitfilin yesh Shem Shaddai, and we know in the Tefilin is also the name Shin Dalad Yud. Ubimizuzah Shem Shaddai, and also in the Mizuzah there's also the name Shin Dalad Yud. Rashum al Habayit mi Bachutz is put on the Bayit, which is put on the Mizuzah on the outside. In the Klaf, the Shin Dalad Yud is on the outside. The Chotem Amelach Samim al Malbushe Eved Shehem. And what happens? Just like we see when there's a slave, or when there's a slave, what happens? The master brands the slave, or if you're an animal, a master will brand the animal. So this way, it's with his sign. This way, everybody knows that slave or that animal belongs to them. Them. So this, when we person is putting on the Brit Milah, we're having a Brit Milah. That is the sign. That is the branding on the Jewish male's body that he is Eved Hashem. That he's a servant of God. So that is the goof of the neshama, which is the body. The house and the mezuzah is the levush, is the clothing of the neshama. Tfilin levush ala ruach. The tfilin is the clothing of the ruach. The amila levush ala gufa nefesh. And the mila is the levush on the goof and the nefesh. The hem haot ve achotemet ha yehudi shehu shaliach shel amelech ve avdo la taken haolam ba machut shadai. And this ot, the brit mila, is basically the sign on the Jew that he is a shaliach, that he is as a messenger of the king, the avdo and his servant, le taken olam me machut shadai, to correct the world in the kingdom in the malchut of Shindalad Yud. And the Chotemet is, is, is testifying to the Kedusha of Hashem that is Shorabo, that is on the person through the Brit Milah. But on Shabbat, when all the world is sanctified with in the Kedusha of Hashem, the Adam Nimsa Beramon Hamelech, and the person is in the Armon, he's in the palace of the king, the Ochel Al Shuchan Hamelech, and he eats on the table of the king, and not from the minimal amount of food that he is allotted. He doesn't need the Chotam of the Melech. Why? Because he's in the presence of the Melech. Just like we said before, that if the king is there, you don't need his signet ring. The only time you need the signet ring is when the king is not there. This is the Lashon that's in the book Shabbat Malketa, Perak Bet. That the Shabbat is the revelation of Hashem, of God, in, in, in Himself in the world. And during the six days of the week, the world is a mechitza, is a, is, is a, is, has a mechitza, has a partition for, and a hidden, and, the, and, the, and is hidden of the yichud of Hashem, which means during the six days of the week, the yichud of Hashem is hidden. The asuka adam geshem ve'achol because the person is involving himself in the in gashmiut in the, making a living and chol and mundane matters ad shabah shabatu baha menucha until shabbat comes and the menucha comes the shoftim kol inyane haolam ve'aster shabo and all the different items of the world are shovet are resting at are, are created are resting from creative work ve'aster shabo and what's hidden in her in him the chol esek hashabat kedusha v'tara uchvod ve'oneg and all the aspects of the shabbat of the kedusha and tahara and kavod the shabbat and oneg shabbat v'shlitato itbara and the rule of Hashem and His oneness and His goodness is visualized in the world. It's revealed in the world. And that's why Shabbat is not the time for Tefillim. 
And what would be the reason to tie the uh, to to tie his uh, to tie it to his heart and to his mind? Because in that situation, the echad is makif everything is surrounding everything, so therefore the tefillin are not needed on the Shabbat and Yom Tov. Any questions on that? Yes. Hi, uh, it's Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Uh, can you draw a, a parallel with the in scripture? It's talk about the it talks about the uh, circumcision of one's heart. What's the parallel? Is there a parallel? Is there a parallel? I'm asking. Is there a parallel? So the circumcision of the the, the circumcision of the heart is basically it's uh, I'll I'll tell let me show you, actually there's a concept of lev evan and there's a concept of lev basar, a heart that is made out of stone and a heart that is made out of basar, of flesh. Um, we know the Jewish people are am kishe oref, they're stubborn, which is more leaning towards the concept of lev evan. The goal is for a person to become lev basar. Lev basar, which means a softened heart, a contrite heart. As David Amela said, ruach nishbara, what, the concept of a, a, bro, a contrite spirit, not broken from the point of view of low, but contrite. That's the concept of Lev Nishbara, uh, Lev Nishbara, and this is the concept of Lev Basar. You can't circumcise stone. You can only circumcise flesh. So the first thing that has to happen is the person has to turn his Lev from being a Lev of stone to a Lev of Basar. Once it's a Lev of Basar, then you can be the Chotem and Hashem. And the discussion over there about the Lev Basar was specifically on Har Sinai before the Cheta Egel, and this is the Lev that's going to be in the time of the Mashiach, when the Mashiach is going to reveal himself, and the Yichud of Hashem is going to be obvious to everyone in the world, Jew and Gentile alike, and that's when Hashem is going to give us a Brit Milah, we're going to give us a circumcision of the Lev, and this way the, all the commandments will be written on our heart forever, and there won't be any need for Yetzirah, there won't be any need for the entire, the, the Malach HaMavid is going to be slaughtered. Okay. Let's go back to the top of the line in the second paragraph there. It says over here, And what is the language in the Torah that is the siman for this midah that we're talking about, the malchut? What is the siman? Whether it's written in the Torah, whether it's written in the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim. Hu l'shon ko. When the Pasuk says ko, this is the this is the remez to the malchut. The midah hazot lefi shehi papotach lechol hamaalot, and this is the midah that opens up to all the maalot. He sod ruach hakodesh. This is the sod of ruach hakodesh, divine inspiration, which is uh, a level below prophecy but above batkol. Umimena nichnasim. Next page. Haneviim leolam hanevua, and through this the prophets. Enter into the world of the prophecy. And that's why the Talmud teaches us that all of the prophets spoke with the language of Ko. Ko Amar Hashem. One prophet spoke with a different language. That was Moshe Rabbeinu. What does Moshe Rabbeinu say? Zeha Davar Hashem. And that's because Moshe was already inside the Malchut. He was already to the Tiferet. And that's the context of Zeh. Ko is feminine, that's a remez to the Shekhinah. Ze is a reference to the Tiferet, which is masculine. Continuing on, Umishtamashim ba hanevim harbe. And we see the prophets use this term, Ko hamar Hashem, very, very frequently. The Zehu Shomrim, and this is what it says, Hanevim be komot harbe bekinu Shekhinah. And this is when the prophets said in many, many places, Ko amar yudke vavke. Concept Yud Kevav of course, being the Tiferet, right? Ko, this is how the prophets enter. To understand what Yud Kevav is saying, they enter through the Midah of Ko. That's why it's Ko Amar Hashem. The Midah Hazot, and this Midah, 
כמו שהודענו, הוא חל, like I've explained to you already, אברהם אבינו עליו השלום התחיל להחזירה למטה. Abraham Avinu began to bring this Midah down to the world. We talked about this before, the different levels of the Shekhinah. Of course, before Adam HaRishon made the sin, the Shekhinah was throughout the entire Aretz. And then after he made the sin, and then continuing on with the sin of Cain, and the sin of Dora Mabul, and the sin of Dora Palaga, then the Shekhinah went up and up and up, till it was very, very high up and far away from us. And Abraham Avinu was the one who began to bring the Shekhinah down. Uh, and we know, it, he discusses previously, that when Moshe Rabbeinu built the Mishkan, the Shekhinah came to the place of the Mishkan. When David HaMelech and then Shlomo HaMelech built the Bet HaMikdash, then the Shekhinah came down to the land, but not in the entire world, only to the Makom of the Mikdash. Bezrat Hashem, when the Mashiach comes, and the, you have that, then the Shekhinah will be brought throughout the entire world. The entire world will be filled with connection, with intimate knowledge of Yudke Vavke. And that's when the Shekhinah will be back to where it was before the sin of Adam Marishon throughout the entire world in all the places. And this perhaps is the concept when the Gemara teaches us, or the Midrash says, that in the time of the Mashiach, Eretz Yisrael will extend throughout the entire world. Eretz Yisrael has the Kiddushah because Eretz Asher Hashem Doresh Otat Tamid, that's where the Shekhinah is found always, whereas in the rest of the world, the Shekhinah is only there when the Jewish people are there. But in the time of the Mashiach, what's going to happen is that's going to spread everywhere in the world. That doesn't mean the Jewish people are going to live in America, though, and that's something we have to start thinking about packing our bags. Let's continue on. And Avraham Avinu began to call the name Yud Kevavke. And that's why the Gemara says in Masechet Brachot that Avraham Avinu was the first one to call God Adon. Be'omro, Adonai Elohim Mati Tenli. Hashem Elohim, what are you going to give me? Va'anochi holech ariri. Yes? This is what it says over there. Ve'ashiv Hashem itbaraki b'chol ma'archot ha'kochavim. And Hashem responded to him and said, In all of the different aspects of the kochavim of the stars, Ush'ar kol tzivot olam elyonim v'tachtonim. And all the armies in the worlds of above and the worlds below. En lo zera. He has no zera. Avraham Avinu will have no children. Zulati b'koach hamidah nikra ko. Only with the midah that is called ko, shehi shara tefillah, which is the shara of the tefillah. And this is how every person can change the koach of the mazalot. The mazalot are the constellations which help to predict what's going to happen because the malachim are over the constellations and of course Hashem is over the malachim. So everything is Hashem's will. But the constellation gives you a sign of what might happen. Through the prayer, a person can change their change what's going on up there because through a prayer he's able to do that and this is the concept of en mazal le yisrael shehi hameapechet midat adin le rachamim and this is how the midah of the din of the judgment can be changed in midah of the rachamim u'meviyat tachat mavet chayim and brings it below the mavet of chayim tachat choli refua i'm sorry and he brings, instead of the mavet, life, instead of death, brings life. Instead of sickness, it brings healing. Instead of barrenness, it brings children. Because everything is tied to her. Because this is the opening of the eyes. We're on page Kof Tet Vav. One second, did we skip anything? No, we skip one. Here we go. We got to go back to page Kof Yudalid, and we're Kof Nun Zayin. It says here Lashon Ko, the language of Ko. Ayen bidrasha lesiyum hashash, hashas lehagriach besefer siach yitzchak shebi'er baruchah inyan Ko. Look in this book called Siach Yitzchak, where the rabbi there explained in detail this concept of Ko. Shemisaper kaf dalid, shemispar kaf dalid. Because the number 24, more al olam ha is telling us about the world of the Bria, the world of the, of the creation. The teva sheyesh lechomer shebo, and the nature that is in the material that is in her, shesh ketzavot be'arba'a ruchot, six different directions, six different, uh, shall we say, uh, directions in the four different ways. Um, I'm not sure what he means by this. Abaruchot Hashemayim, North, East, South, and West. Olah Kavdala. This equals 24. 
So four directions uh, is north, east, south, west. And the sixth, and that would be the Chesed, Gura, Tiferet, Netzach, Chod, Yisod. Continuing on, the Kulam Ponim Nekuda, Mem Sa'it, and all of them point to the middle Nekuda, the middle one, Shiha Shorash Shil Kulam, that is the root for all of them, the Olama Atzilut, Shihi Hako, in the world of Atzilut, which is the Ko, of course, that is talking about the Shekhinah. Like we explained above, that the sphere of the Malchut is considered to be the Even Shtiya, the foundation stone that's on Harabite. This is the middle point, the root in the Atzilut, of all the worlds that are created. So we see the Malchut is the root of all the creations that come after her. Of course, the Malchut being the connected to the Atzilut. Um, which is, of course, uh, not part of the creation, but part of the uh, part of the emanation. And it was also explained in the book of the Pardes. We see that the Malchut is called Ko. From the 25 gates that she receives from the right side. And also it's called Ko because of the 25 gates that is small from the left. Ketzad. How does this work? Yud shel gedula, the yud shebet netzach, the hamesh shel tiferet l'tzad yamin. Which means because the tiferet is in the middle, so it's like half goes to the right and half goes to the left. That's twenty-five. Hem kafei sharim leyamin. These are the twenty-five gates to the right. The chen kafei the small, and also there are twenty-five to the left. Ketzad. How does this work? Yud begvura, the yud behod. Ten in the gura, ten in the hod. The hey shel tiferet shebet tzad small, and also the five of the tiferet that's on the left side. The hem kafei bet tzad small. This is twenty-five on the tzad small. And this is what we said, that there's 25 vis-a-vis the right and 25 vis-a-vis the left. That's the fifth day. Vis-a-vis the small, these are all sharim vis-a-vis the small, this is the, uh, that they're where the bina is. Yatspin. And this is the concept where our rabbis told us that if a person wants to become wealthy, he should go north. Yatspin from the language Safon. Ubina bigvura ikar giluya. And the bina is mostly revealed where? In the gvura. Because right underneath the bina is the sphira the gvura. And this is essentially where the bina is revealed in the gvura. And that's why the tzafon is vis a vis the gvura. As it says, mitzafon ti patachara. This is where Bavel came, and came in from the north, and Ashur came in from the north. All the troubles come from the north. This is the concept of the gvura, the troubles or the dinim, shall we say. Nimsa she'afilo otam she'em mitzad chesed hem gvura. And therefore we see that even the ones that are chesed, which is the ones that are on the right, are all connected to the bina, which is really on the, which is uh, the bina, of course, is on the left. This is the understanding of that there are 50 gates for the Bina. That 25 are on the right and 25 are on the left. And because the Malchut, the essential place where she draws her sustenance, is from the small, the Gvura, from the left and from the Gvura, she din, this is din, lachen hi kafe. That's why the Malchut is called kafe. Because it's from the from the dinim ayen sham ayen lael and look above shamachut nikret yam we also see above that the malchut is also called yam shemekabelat kol achamishim shearim min abina because she receives all the fifty gates from the bina and of course the gematria of yam is fifty hanikret mi it's also called mi gematria chamishim the gematria fifty. Uh, as is a pasuk that says mi bara ele idea yesod tani krakol by way of the sod that's called kol which is 25 gam hu gematria chamishim she is also a gematria of chamishim kof nun chet hu sod ruach hakodesh ruach hakodesh hi ha haskala sheba le adam shelo bederach hateva which means, what is Ruach HaKodesh? This is any type of inspiration that comes to a person not naturally. 
וההבדל בין השכל הנעצר לשכל הטבעי. So what's the difference between שכל that comes from an emanation, which is supernatural, versus שכל that is טבעי, which is natural? שהשכל הטבעי הכל שווים בו צדיק כרשע. Because in, in שכל טבעי, in natural, uh, natural שכל, everybody is the same, the צדיק and the רשע. You can have someone smart like the Rambam, and you can have Lahavdil Lahavdil, someone smart like Karl Marx. At the end of the day, they're both brilliant. So the Sechel, for uh, the, the human part, the natural part, is Tzadik Karasha, it's no difference. Lo ken Sechel Ne'etzal. But this is not the case, and of course, not comparing the Rambam to Karl Marx, God forbid. Lo ken Sechel Ne'etzal. But this is not the same idea of the Sechel that is Ne'etzal, that comes from an emanation, that comes from the emanation. Who mitat Elohim liyere Hashem? This is a gift of God to those who fear Him, which means people who are rishaim do not receive sechel that is uh, that is uh, neetzal. They only have sechel tivi. Kmoshe biyer besefer derech Hashem, like derech Hashem explained. Chelat gal gimel perek gimel. He ne chakak kaboreit barach betivo. God engraved. Uh, in the nature shel ha'adam, in the nature of the person, shem mitlamed mevin umaskil, that the person learns and understands and becomes wise. Behashkifo al hanim tsaim bechinotehem, through his hashkaf, through his looking, through his observation of the physical world, the things that are found, and all of their different aspects, which is really he's talking here perhaps about the study of science. And this is the Haskalah Tivit, the natural sciences, shall we say. Omnam od Gazar. But God also decreed, But there's really a Haskalah, there's a type of, shall we say, intelligence that is me'ule, that is much higher, more exalted, much more exalted than the, now, than the, uh, the, um, the, the intelligence that is natural. This is the intelligence that is influenced, which means it's ne'etzal, it's received from above. That he receives this shefa from Hashem itbarach. And when this shefa comes into his sechel, he has an understanding of the item, with clarity and without any safek, without any doubt, and without any mistakes. The Adaha Dava Bishlemut, and he knows the item in its Shlemut, in its perfection. Sibotav Todotav, its causes and its effect. Kol Dava Bimadregato, everything in its order, in its place. The Inyan Zenikra Ruach HaKodesh, and this is called Ruach HaKodesh. Wow. The Shoresh Hashpaot Haruchaniot. And the shorish, the root of this influence, this spiritual influence, le'olamot ha to the worlds of the bria, ve'ateva hi svirat ha-malchut. This is from the svirat of the malchut. Kedita b'gmara b'megillah, like it's explained in the Magmara Masechet Megillah, on daf tet vav amuralat. Ve'atalbesh ester malchut, that ester, when she went to go to Achash Rosh, it says that she wore malchut, she wore malchut. Of course, the pshat over there is she put on clothing of, of the of the kingship of the queen. But of course it's talking about something else. The Talbesh Esther Malka Esther of course is representing the Shekhinah. She wore the Malchut. Big day Malchut mi baile. What do you mean? She say Big Day Malchut. She wore clothing of Malchut. What does it mean that Esther dressed with Malchut? It should say clothing of Malchut. Ella Shilav Shata Shil Shilav Shata Ruach HaKodesh. What did she do? She put on Ruach HaKodesh, which means when she went to Achash Rosh, she went with Ruach HaKodesh. The Katav Shem in Maharsha, and the Maharsha wrote on this Gemara, Masechet Megillah, Shemalchut hiya achrona miyud ha-sfirot, that the Malchut is the bottom of the ten Sfirot, mimena Ruach HaKodesh mashpia al hadam ha-sochel lekach. And from the Malchut, the Ruach HaKodesh, the divine inspiration, is mashpia on the person that is merited to have that. The Chol Haskala Elokit Nevua Ruach HaKodesh Ba'al Adam, and any type of intelligence, any type of uh, influence that comes from Hashem through prophecy and Ruach HaKodesh Sheba'al Adam Milamala that comes from the, to the person from above. 
mushpat misfirat malchut is mushpa is influence from the sphere of the Malkut. Everything comes through the Malkut, like we've discussed before. Derech shoresh nishmato sham by way of his neshama that is tied to the Malkut, that is connected to the Malkut. Ayen od lekaman beperek gimel dalad inyan hanevua minetza vehod amud shin shin ayin gimel. Look further in the book Share Ora, in the Shar of. Give a, a, a para, the, the third and fourth parak, which I was talking about, the Svirav Netzach and Hod, and the names of Hashem that are vis a vis those, those Svirav. Any questions on that? Okay, let's continue on. Kof Nun Tet. Umimena Nich Nasim Haneviim Le Olam Hanevua. And through the Ko, the Malchut, this is how the prophets go into the world of the prophecy. Misfirat ha-malchot ha-nikret ko, through, from the sphira of the malchut, which is called ko, hayu nichnasim ha-nevi'im le'olam ha The prophets were able to enter into the world of the prophecy. Kumo shekatav ha-rakanti, like the rakanti wrote, parashat naso, in parashat naso, da, ki knesset yisro nikret batorah ko. Look, knesset yisro, which we learned Last week or two weeks ago is the Malchut, the Knesset, the concept of the gathering together of Israel. Knesset, of course, being feminine, is called in the Torah Ko. The same thing of the Malchut is the Knesset Yisrael. Lefishhi petach le malat ruach hakodesh, because this is an opening for the level of ruach hakodesh. Umimena nichnasim kol anevim, and through this shar, all the prophets enter. Alken katuv ba Torah ko amar Hashem, and that's why it's written in the Torah ko amar Hashem. We understand that tefillah is the same prof, same way, because once again, tefillah and prophecy are very close to each other. The difference, of course, being with tefillah, it's a communication between man and God. God might be communicating back, but the person doesn't understand or can't hear it. The prophet that is able to understand what God is communicating back. The nevuah naaset ayedeshe navi ole l'shorash nishmato, and the prophecy is achieved when the prophet is able to rise up through the malchut to the shorash of his nishama b'sfirat malchut in the sphere of the malchut hanikret ko that is called ko umisham asiget kol arot, and from there he's able to mesig, able to uh, perceive all of the lights, all of the emanations, of course, from the upper sphirot, above the Malchut, Kamo Shibiyeva Sefer Sha'are Kedusha, like was explained in more detail in the book Sha'are Kedusha, Chela Gimel Sha'ar Hei. Ki HaNevoah Hi HaDvekut Shel HaNavi Bo Yitbarach Shemo. Because the prophecy is achieved through the Dvekut, to the attachment of the prophet to Hashem Yitbarach Shemo. Ayedeh Shekoach HaMedameh because the power of the imagination of the prophet rises up in the upper worlds, to the roots of his nefesh that are in the malchut that we discussed before, until the actual image appears in his imagination, in his makor elyon. And that's why, if you look in the prophets in the Tanakh, Many of them had the same, shall we say, message, but the message was couched in either different words or different imagery, because each prophet is seeing it based on his own shorash of his soul in the Sphira of the Malchut. Az Yachshov Kabel Or Mina Eses Sphirot, and then he receives Or, emanation from the tenth Sphirot, Meota Nekudash Shorash Nishmato Nechezecham, through the specific area, the root where his soul is tied to. And the Shefa comes down one level to another level until it comes to his nefesh, to his nefesh of the Sechel, of his Sechel. But of course, this is called the Sechel of the Ruchani. And the, the place of the root of his, nef, of his neshama is explained there in Sharbet. That the neshama is basically an or that is basically born and is drawn down from the SS Firot Atzmam, Shelo Ayede and Said, not by way of a middle person. This is what he discussed last week. And through this, because there's no middle person there, that's why the Jewish people are called Banim La Hashem There's no one in the middle. Unlike with all the Gentile nations that have a Sar, that have a have a Malach 
between them and uh, and Hashem. The kavanato shenishmat Yisrael he or mityaled me'aseh svirot, and the kavana of this is the neshama of the Jew is basically or that is mityaled that comes me'aseh svirot from the tenth svirot, of course, of the atzilut. That's where the shorish of the the, the neshama and the or of the Jewish neshama is. Ukshura b'shoshal svirat ha'malchut keneset Yisrael, and it is tied to the root. In the in the sphere of the Malchut that is Knesset Yisrael, the Yedei Ha'Aliyah LeShorish Nishmato, and through rising up to the root of his Neshama, the Knesset Yisrael in the sphere of the Malchut, the Knesset Yisrael, Malchut the Atzilut, the Malchut of the Atzilut, Masig Hanaviyat Tahaskala Mimenu Itbarach. This is how the Prophet receives his inspiration from Hashem. Usfirat Malchut and the Sphira of the Malchut he aspaklaria. This is the lens. This is the aspaklaria, the spectacle. Shidarkaro Shidarcha through her Roim Hanevim et Haorot Ayonim. The prophets are able to see the Orot Ha'elyonim, the upper the lights in the of the upper worlds, which means the upper Sphirot. So the rabbis were able to uh, to discern how the prophets did it. It must have been somewhat frustrating for them. They say they know how the prophets do it, but we can't do it. Contained within the Kabbalah is all of the ways of the prophets. Mm. And that's why if you look in it, I discussed this uh, previously. If you look in the Talmud, the Talmud has basically two aspects to the Talmud. One is the sugya of the Halakha, right? And the other one is the Agadah. So, of course, we have to ask ourselves a question. We don't learn halakha from agada, yes? Why is the agada in the Talmud at all? And that's why he had a rabbi whose name is Rav Al-Fasi. What he did is, because his goal was to bring the halachot from the Gemara, he removed, not removed, of course, his Gemara was perfect, but what he did is he rewrote the Gemara only with the sugyot of the halakha. That's called Hilchot Harif. Then we have another rabbi, years later, who wrote a different book where he did the opposite. He took out the halachic sugyot, and he only put the agadot on there, and that is called En Yaakov. En Yaakov is basically only the sugyot of the agada. So, of course, we have to ask a question. If the goal of the Gemara is to teach halacha, why do we need the sugyot of the agada? What did they add? They add, in the Gemara is contained, first of all, the type of learning a person has to have to become a posek, which of course is the halakha, and contained within the Gemara is the type of learning a person has to have to become a prophet, and that is the agada. And through the sod, which was transmitted, of course, from the Zohar and through, this is contained with all the secrets of how a person should become a prophet. And that's why the Zohar talks about the fact that in the end of days, right before the Mashiach, one of the things we have to do is megale, reveal the sod, because the prophecy is going to come back, so we have to introduce this back. It was dormant for a very, very long time, but it's going to come back completely. And that's the concept. And if you look at the, to- the, to- the Tanakh, how does it refer to the prophecy returning back? I will spill my ruach on the people again. This is exactly what we've been learning here. So contained within the Sod are all the secrets of prophecy. And that's why if you look through the Tanakh, you have a concept of B'nai HaNevi'im, the sons of the prophets. What were the B'nai HaNevi'im? Those are yeshivot. Those are yeshivas. But in those yeshivas, they didn't focus on Gemara and Poskim. In those yeshivas, they focused on prophecy. Prophecy. How to do it. Okay? Very nice. Yeah. And that's why this book is so essential because this book really opens up all the gates of prayer. And that's, again, that's the reason we're learning it. Bezat Hashem, Mashiach should come soon, and we'd all be zocher to be prophets. But in the meantime, we have a mitzvah to pray. And so let's learn how to pray. And through becoming experts in the prayer, and also in learning Torah and the different names of Hashem that are in the different Pesukim, this is how we'll be able to, Bezat Hashem, when the Mashiach comes, perhaps be zocher to be prophets. Let's just do uh, one more, Kof Samach, and with this we will uh, conclude. Yes, okay. Umishtamshim ba haneviim harbe. He said that the neviim, the prophets, use this midav ko frequently. 
כמו שספירת המלכות מציירת את האורות העליונים, just like the sphere of the מלכות is מציירת, is draw, it draws or, or outlines the אורות העליונים, the upper lights, ונותנת להם את תמונתם, and gives them their picture, of course we're not talking physical, we're talking spiritual, כפי שהם נבראים בעולמות התחתונים, like they are created in the world below, which means when we see where in Yermiyahu was going to see the prophecy with regarding the, where the trouble was coming, what did he see? Sir Nafuach, a pot that was boiling. Of course there was no pot, but in his mind that was the image he saw. So through images of things in this world, this is how the prophets know the message underneath, because it's specifically for them. Because remember, the prophecy goes directly to the prophet, and his shorash of his neshama in the malchut, this is what's being communicated with. כך היא מציירת לנביאים את תמונת האורות העליונים, שמשל על הנהגתו יתברך. Similarly to the prophets, the תמונה, the picture, or the, uh, the uh, viewpoint of the אורות העליונים, of the upper world, of their lights, שהם משל של על הנהגתו, they're all משלים, they're all parables of the government of God in the, of the world. כמו שביאר הרמח"ל, right? The רמח"ל explained, בספר הכללים, כלל למד וב. עניין הדמיונות הנבואיים, the idea of the prophetic imagery, who, what does this mean? שהקדוש ברוך הוא מראה הערתו לנביאה בדמיונות נבואיים. That God, קדוש ברוך הוא, the Holy One, blessed be He, shows His emanation to His prophets with imagery, prophetic imagery. ומודיע להם בזה מידותיו. And He reveals to them His מידות, also ספירות, to the Prophet through these prophetic images. And Malchut is called Tmunat Hashem, the Tmuna of Yudke Vavke. Ki hi shorash atmunot shal anivraim, because this is the shorash, this is the root of all of the, of the imagery of the, of the created beings. Shehem anafim min ha midot ha'elyonot, because they are, there are branches of the midot elyonot, the upper branches, of the, of, the, of the upper midot, of the sfirot. Biyot sheratza ha'adon baruch Hashem, that Hashem had a will, leha'atik hanhagot midotav, to copy over the government of his midot, of his uh, attributes, ve'inyanehem, and their details, el ha'tmunot shel ha'nivraim, to the imagery of the created beings, of course, here being the prophets. Ach shorash ha'tmunot el fi chok ha'atak hazeh, but the root of these different uh, prophetic images is according to the rule of the malchut, hi ha'malchut, that is the, where, it's, there, it's where it's pictured, it's in the malchut. But the prophets are not able to misig the orot elyonim ela mitzad haat katam ela tmunot. How it's pictured in the malchut. This is the concept of tmunat Hashem yabit, which is in the malchut. Venimsash en masigim ela ha malchut. And therefore, we see the prophets only appreciate the malchut. They have a reflection of what's above. In the Malchut, and that's how they understand what's above, but they don't see what's above directly. Shemimena maskilim umasigim haorot alyonim. And from this, maskilim umasigim, they become uh, knowledgeable and they achieve and they uh, grab, grab the orot alyonim. And that's why the Pasuk says, the maskilim yazhiru kezohar harakia. The concept of Haskalah, but this is not Haskalah like we have in the 17 and 1800s, enlightenment of uh, the Gentiles. No, this is the spiritual Haskalah, and that's where Kizohar Harakia. And it's no coincidence that the book was called Sefer HaZohar. Ken Kata B'Klach Pitei Chokmah, and this was also written by the Ramchal in the book Klach Pitei Chokmah, Petach Tet, HaMachut Nikret Tumunat Hashem. The Malchut is called the image, the, the picture of Kaviachol of Hashem. Ki hi goremet hadimyonot shezachana besfirot. Because she, the Malchut, causes, is the cause of the imagery that we mentioned from the Sfirot. Ki hi hashorash lechol atachtonim lechol metziutam. Because the Malchut is the source of all of the lower worlds and all of their reality. 
And in the Malchut, there's this idea that through the rules that are established there, they will see the different imagery and the different, shall we say, quote-unquote, bodies of, in, in, of the lower worlds. Ach, adayin shama tzura ruchani. But this is all ruchaniyut. There's no physicality here. This is all imagery in the imagination of the prophet, which has a mashal. And then he has to understand the nimshal. Again, or besefer datfunot. Look again in the book datfunot for more detail there. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, may your may your father's nishma have a aliyah, Daniel, based on the Torah we learned tonight. Okay, Amen. thank you so Amen. much for attending. I'm sure in Shemayim he's smiling. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Baruch Adonai Olam. Amen. Ve'amen.